Hello fellow carbon-based human life forms, Paul Sun Young Lee here in my geeky basement, welcoming you to another edition, the 8th edition of Fun Boxing Sundays, where basically I unbox a bunch of cool stuff, do a half-ass review, and we chat with each other. Now, for those of you who are new to this channel, welcome! I hope uh, you find some value in it, I hope you have a good time, and you learn something and have a lot of fun. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, clicking like, and hitting that little bell notification on the bottom so you know whenever I drop a new video. Now, for those of you who have been here before, you're in for a treat because today I've counted the votes. Last uh, Fun Boxing Sunday, we had a vote, an informal vote or a poll uh, as to see which, which of my hot toys I'm gonna open up. And it was a choice between the Heavy Mandalorian, the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, or Commander Cody. And the people have spoken, the people have spoken, the nerds have uh, have spoken, the geeks have inherited the earth, and it was an overwhelming uh, vote for the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian. So that's what we're gonna be opening up. That's right, the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, of course, from season one of The Mandalorian, voiced by Jon Favreau, the maker himself, um, and uh, based on perhaps one of the characters um, that he played or related to one of the characters that he played in Star Wars Rebels. That's uh, Paz Vizla. Uh, and this heavy infantry Mandalorian is named Pre Vizla, apparently. So there's, there's a bit of a connection there. And of course, John Favreau did do the voice for the character in Rebels. Um, we've also got some premium box sets, 4K box sets that I'm going to be opening up. Somebody in the comment section last week, I can't remember who it was. But they basically said, hey, are you going to be opening up any more uh, of the, the premium box sets, the movies? And I said, absolutely. i got a whole bunch upstairs. I'm a huge collector of physical media. I believe in it. I love it. Uh, I, I don't enjoy streaming that much. And I'd rather have something physical in my hands to just sort of manipulate and, 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 and touch. Um, I, I trust in that more than streaming services right now because I don't need uh, the internet to watch uh, a 4K disc if I have it in my, in my player there. So there's that. And I also have, for those of you who stick around, something really, really cool I picked up a few days ago. I'm really excited to share it and to show all of you uh, what it is. It's a mystery box right here, back here. Um, I'm excited to show it to you all, so hopefully you enjoy it. Now, um, before we begin, as we do every Sunday, let's see who is in the basement with me. That's right, I'm talking about the hashtag Bitter Brigade. And I see a lot of familiar faces already. I see uh, Gaming Zombie Rob, uh, Ray, I'm so sorry, you, you hurt your ribs. See, Ray, Rob, ribs. It, it, it all sort of rolls into one. I, I hope you're doing okay. Kevin Wong is in the basement. Hey, what's up, Butter Baron? Good to see you here. We have Chris Christie. This is your first time you've been able to see this live. Fantastic. I hope you have a great time. Um, RMD Collective. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm so glad we follow each other on Instagram. I had no idea. Uh, I, I'm so, I try to follow back as many people as I can. And uh, I saw your post on my IG feed and was like, I know RMD Collective. They... They're on my live stream, so well, it was it was just a no-brainer to follow back. So I'm glad we're following each other on there. Joe Galati, how are you, sir? Hope you're doing well. Melissa K, hey hey from Sweden, how are you? Mel Dade, I I switched it early, so you're not gonna miss your PBS show. I switched it, so on side. Oh, and that brings me to another thing. Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. I'm gonna say hello to Bad Wolf Media in the basement. Don Kelly, first timer, right on. Tommy K, you demand a recount of that vote. Shut up, Tommy. Shut up. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Tommy is a dear friend of mine and a neighbor. Our sons go to school together and uh, we got this little thing going on where I get to tell him to shut up and he burns me with his verbal uh, reposts there. Uh, we have, oh, Joe. Joe Galat is asking, why do I always look forward to see what that t-shirt, what t-shirt Paul's wearing? Today, I am wearing a property of East York baseball shirt, association shirt. I am... Uh, my youngest, Miles, the boy 2.0, he plays select ball for the East Shore Bulldogs. And uh, the last couple of years, I've been an assistant coach, and I am absolutely loving it. I love the East, Bo East York Baseball Association. Uh, they've been great for Miles. Um, it's a real community sort of cornerstone, and I love giving back. And, you know, if you love baseball, it's fantastic if you can coach it, too, with, with young kids who are developing and having fun. So it's, it's great to, to do that as well. We have Lisa Eve Creative from Pennsylvania. Hello, welcome to the basement. We'll see. Hello, Jinpei, my friend. How are you? Good. Great to see you here. Uh, we, yes, thank you at Unboxing Stream. Sean P, 
I am doing well. How are you, sir? Hope things in LA are doing good. Uh, I heard there's a resurgent, uh, resurgence of the uh, COVID Delta variant, and you've had to go back to wearing masks, but no worries. I think it's going to be great. Uh, you're going to get past that. Um, we have Grand, uh, Brandy Gulick from Germany. Hello. How are you? Uh, and we have Left Coast Graphics from Vancouver. <laughs> Let them breathe. That's right. Um, Colin Hollis. Hey, Colin, thank you so much for the DVD um, version. I have something for you. And your wife or your partner dropped off uh, the DVD the other day and you guys you guys ran off so quick, I didn't get a chance to give it to you, but I have a couple of represent hats for you for your generosity. Thank you so much. Um, we have CR in the basement. Looking forward to that mystery unboxing. Oh yeah, it's really cool. It's super cool. It's super heavy. And that's all I'm going to say. Uh, Commando Vic is there. Hello. How are you? Uh, Lisa Eve Creative. Yes. Sugar. Oh, hey, Gene. How are you? Uh, from Las Vegas. Just got the alert. That's fantastic. Glad to have you on board. Thomas D. How are you, sir? Uh, the Baby Seal Clubber. Hello. And we have Midge Studios in the basement. Zorona North York. Uh, Devin White Productions. Hey, Mr. Kim. Hey, hi. How are you, Dev? Uh, we have HS from Michigan. This is truly an international stream, and that's what I love. I, I mean, I love, I keep saying this, but Sunday is my favorite day because I get to interact with all y'all, so that's fantastic. Adam Lynch from Kentucky, right on. Um, uh, Daniel, my man, Daniel D. Sertle, how are you? You've been waiting to see this one. Might not be one to bring me down the, yeah, this, this might be. Honestly, Hot Toys, it's a slippery slope. For those of you, who um, have not had an opportunity, uh, these Hot Toys are one six scale, about 12 inches in size. The level of detail is crazy. I know I got uh, Ray, uh, Gaming Zombie, completely hooked on them now. And uh, it's just, I can't believe it. Like the, the level, and it's expensive. It's almost more expensive than drugs. So it's gonna be cool, but check it out for yourselves when, when we open this, this baby up. And it's like potato chips, you can't just have one. Once you get the taste of it. Uh, we have uh, Tom Lee. Thank you so much. The camera is so good. High quality. That's a Sony A6400. Uh, I've done some upgrades. I started with a Canon M50. Loved it. Found it a bit limiting. And I upgraded to a, a Sony A6400. I'm loving it. Thank you so much for that compliment. I'm really sort of enjoying the quality that it brings to Rooster. The day goes really well, my friend. The day goes really well. I actually got a message from Frank Ippolito, who is a master props builder, uh, costumer, all-around geek and nerd. Um, and uh, he's in town working on uh, the Umbrella Academy. And, uh, his company is is doing some of the the, ward, the costume for the costumes for them. And he came in for a fitting, a specialized fitting. Called me up, said, hey, I'm in town. Let's hook up. So we did. We had a great lunch at Storm Crow Manor, one of my favorite nerdy slash geeky bars in the town. Um, got a chance to meet face to face. And for those of you who don't know, Frank, uh, his company has done some work on The Mandalorian. He actually played in season two, the Calamarine, uh, Calamarian uh, dock worker with the, with the, uh, the Amazon Basics sweater of all things, uh, in that episode where the Mandalorian actually goes uh, to, to seek um, Bo-Katan, basically. Um, what else? Uh, so we had a great lunch together. And um, yeah, no, it's it, I had a great day. Fantastic day. Uh, Sam Panda, hello, how are you? Uh, Tamir Mad Majdri, Majdri, Tamir Majdri. Match Dree. I'm sorry if I've screwed it up. I'm sorry. It's like I try really hard because I know what it's like when you have a middle, like my middle name, Hyung Sun Young. People lose their minds over that. So I, I'm very conscious about trying to pronounce names correctly. But welcome, welcome, welcome to the basement. It's great to have you here. Um, okay. I, Brian Schoenfeld, you're here. Uh, Robert Jimenez, uh, Romeo, how are you? What kind of underwear is Paul wearing? The holy variety. Uh, <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say. Zorona from North York is here. Hello. Uh, we've got Sean Mendoza. Charles Stevens from Southeast Texas is here. Frank de Los Angeles. Oh, hello, Paul. Me and my family miss you and the rest of the Kim's Convenience cats. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Um, Mike Yuan is in the basement. Can't stay on for too long. But as always, he's asking, 
Where can we get those represent hats or those bitter hats? Wow, where can we get it? Hmm, if there only was a graphic. <gasps> there it is. Shameless plug. I'm sorry, I know we're not even like 10 minutes into this stream and I'm already plugging the merch, but uh, I love these hats. Represent hats. Um, on the front, they've got bitter Asian dude on the back. Uh, represent is something that is deeply personal for all of us, I believe. And I think, you know, it's, it's, it's just being the best version of yourself. And I thought that's a great thing to, to sort of show and to, to have. Um, uh, represent can mean where you're from, where you're living, what you believe in. Uh, always, always being kind and putting that best foot for, forward and it's done. I'm really proud of this design. I love it. It's a great, powerful, but simple message. So there you go. If you, if you want yours, please, by all means, feel free to click on the link and, and, and order. Um, Robert Donatello is here, Colin J, hello, uh, Jeff Habs from Montreal, Sam Panda, John Carmen, and uh, I'm just gonna, uh, Nipun, how are you? Um, did I get to watch the last episode of Loki yet? Yes, loved it, loved it. For those of you who haven't, no spoilers, but uh, the Loki series blew me and the boy 1.0, uh, my son, oh wait, completely, wait, wait. we got... Goosebumps, gonna rewatch it again. Gotta dive in and get those really small details in there because so many, so many Easter eggs in that. Uh, it was great. Um, okay, I'm gonna, we can, we can, I could chat forever. Song Ho Khan is in the house, hello. Uh, but I'm going to, I'm gonna get straight to this right now. Here we go, we've got, I'm gonna get this out of the way, get your fish look and be gone. Okay. Um, so this I ordered through the internet. Um, it, it's it, it was uh, actually through Mother Base Creations. It's a Toronto company, and uh, this is yeah heavy, uh, the heavy infantry Mandalorian. This is a Hot Toys TMS zero one zero one six scale. Here's the front. It's got that cigar band type. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna move this ruler out of the way. It's got this cigar band type. Uh, wrap around to it, but just to the side, you can see him there with his heavy weapon. Um, beefy, big, big guy, big guy. And again, here is it's so big the box barely fits in the frame, but there he is. It's an action pose. Now, this is the actual figure itself that's in the box, it's not a picture of uh, it's not a set photo, right? And here it is on the other side, it's just the other band with branding, the back with all of the information of who made it. And of course the warning, small parts do not eat them or choke on them. Uh, I'm going to, Torensu's in the house. Hello, Torensu. Okay, Kobe Ng is from the UK is here, hooray. All right, so let's open this up. We got, I'm gonna pan out a bit, just a little bit there, you're gonna see. I'm wearing shorts because you know what, summertime. Pants are for suckers. Uh, okay, so. As with all Hot Toys, you can see here, it's got the lovely uh, insert, the slipcase, right here, another action show. You know, for those of you who do uh, toy photography too, I mean, again, this is, this is, and those of you who don't know, this is, this is what it's like. These figures are fantastic for setting up dioramas or displays. They've got, you can make them look like actual scenes from the movies or the television show. And there's a craft that's involved that is absolutely stunning that I love. The creativity of a lot of the toy photographers out there. Uh, yeah, Dev, you're asking about what, <laughs> what happened to my thumb. Uh, a dog bit me. Um, yeah, but not like, ah, it, it, there's, um, I'm kind of like the candy man for dogs. I, when we, we, we have Podrick, our dog, our rescue, I have a, a bag full of treats, dried duck treats. And uh, whenever we meet a dog, I try to make it a positive experience for the, for the other dogs. And I, I give out the duck treats. I always ask the other owners, is it all right if I give your dog a treat? And uh, there's, a, there's a dog that we've known um, for over, over a year now and was very shy whenever he came around Podrick, didn't like other dogs and was kind of shy of us. And I won him over and he used to be a little bit shy of me. So, you know, I give him the treat. And over the last couple of months, he's gotten really sort of like, oh my God, there he is, and like choking himself to get to us. And I went to give him the treat and he snapped at it and he actually, his back teeth bit into it. So I've got, let's see, this one, can you see that? Come on, come on, come on, come on. There, there you go. So I've got that little, that's the one point and then the back end kind of right like that. And so, yeah, it, it, it hurt 
for like a couple of days, but what are you gonna do? Now it just looks gross, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so that that's the story behind that. Hello, RJ Burkett, how are you? Um, okay, so here's the, the, we're getting back to what we're here for, not to look at my gross thumb. Uh, these are my reading glasses. Yes, I am of that age now where I need reading glasses. Um, beautiful insert and here here comes the reveal now it slides right out Ooh, that's pretty um okay oh you know what damn it i forgot to turn on my light there we go let's shed some illumination on that okay so here we have the basic tray configuration there's a tray of accessories right here um and i can get some tools to ruin the resale value. <laughs> no, I actually, you know what? It's funny. It's not funny. Uh, Hot Toys retain their value tremendously. So uh, just because they are limited edition, a lot of them, uh, and they go they go out of uh, out of print. And uh, you know, if you see them on eBay, a lot of times they are they they go up in price, even if they're pre pre used um, pre used pre owned. Uh, so here's a tray, uh, extra different hands for different uh, poses. Um, he's got his vibro, vibro dagger there that he fights with the Mandalorian with. Uh, two rocket blasts for his jetpack. And it looks like, I love this, everything is protected too, right? It's got the cover there. And here it has... Ah, these are all ball joints uh, for... For the hands as well, if you if like uh, to have them move in a certain different way. Hello, Cynthia Lynn. How are you? Uh, yes, that's right. And even the shipper boxes are worth money. So, <clears throat> by shipper boxes, I'm gonna see. Does this? There we go. So, oh my head. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna shrink this just a little bit here. There. So my big fat head has room. So what Cynthia is talking about in terms of shipper boxes is these come oftentimes uh, in a brown, plain brown box uh, that is as branded and labeled as, you know, hot toys, this or that. And if you're reselling any of your collectibles, it's good to hold onto the boxes because if you can put them back in the original packaging uh, and if you've taken care of the collectible, it actually adds a value if you're reselling. So there's a little tip for you uh, out there if, if you're thinking about wanting, if you're getting into this, uh, into this hobby and wanting to flip certain items to pay for other items, keep the shipper boxes, keep everything you can, keep everything as pristine as you can uh, when you're unboxing. Uh, there are still some people who just keep everything in a box though and just wanna sit on it and watch it because if it's mint in box, they can actually turn a nice profit profit off of it. So, but that's that's not what I do. Uh, Paul, Paul P. New Jersey is in the basement. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, our friends at the Global Health Science Institute are here from Southern New Mexico. Hello. All right, I'm gonna get back to uh, back to the Mandalorian, heavy heavy infantry Mandalorian. Uh, boom. Um, yeah. So it's it's basic clamshell. It's the same. I'm gonna lift it out of the box here. So, uh, as always too, there are instructions, which I love right here because it, the instructions, what do instructions do? They tell us what we need to know. So we don't have to figure, we don't have to fumble around trying to guess what it's about. Uh, somebody also gave me a great tip that if I wanted to keep the, the instructions uh, mint in envelope, you can actually download the PDFs uh, for uh, instructions for, for whatever figure you have, which is actually quite brilliant. Uh, I'm not going to do that though. I'm just going to, I'm going to pull this out because let's face it, I'm never going to sell these. I'm, this, these are, these are, these are going to get willed to my kids, and if they sell them, well, I'm going to haunt them. But uh, really, this is, this is, this is my children's inheritance right here, right here. So here's the, here's the, here's the envelope, the, 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 the envelope. I guess tape, tape, tape. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, sick back MN from Kenya. Welcome to the basement, my friend. Wow, I love this. I love it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Mike Cass, I never got the shipper boxes being valuable. I've chucked all the shipper boxes, but I've kept the regular boxes. Also, hi, big fan, new sub for me. Hey, thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you for joining. 
And uh, yeah, the, the shipper box thing is weird. But there's there's that hoarder part of me that's sort of like, it's important, it came with it, so just keep it. Uh, let's take a look at the instructions. And look at look at the, he's big. This is a big guy. He is, uh, sorry, I grabbed his crotch by accident. Uh, it, it, this is this is bulky. Compared to the other, uh, compared to the Mandalorian, he is much bigger in size. And here we go, here's the instructions. As you can see, it's basically instructions on how to connect the jet pack. Uh, and the ammo to his gun, uh, right? It's magnet. Oh, it looks like the hook and mag, hook and magnets. Um, the display stand with the dreaded little crotch hook things, which is weird. Um, and again, how to connect the 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 heavy weapon to the Mandalorian, to the infantry Mandalorian. And um, yep, again, where the his wiper blade goes. Like that's the detail, the level of detail, right there. Uh, and it's okay. So that's the instructions. Doesn't look like it's anything too complicated, but if I need to, I can refer back to the instructions because they're not going anywhere. Um, Sugano Pro is asking how accurate are the colors of these toys compared to what you saw on set? I guess my question is, was a Mandalorian more on the shiny gray side or more chrome? You know, it, it's funny that you would ask that just because, um, these are things that I wasn't even considering on set. Uh, when I <clears throat> when Pedro was there, yeah, I did look at the armor, but I wasn't trying to memorize, is that a chrome, is that a silver, none of that. I was just sort of blown away by the crafts, uh, the, how it was put together, and uh, really, really loved that. It was just, uh, just the experience of being on set. So, um, you know, the, the, the idea, it, it's amazing what the costuming com community is, is trying to achieve in terms of its level of accuracy. Um, and I think, well, it's good to be accurate. I think sometimes it's a little bit too obsessive. I mean, for 99% of the population that are watching you, if you're in cosplay, they will look at it and go, wow, you're the Mandalorian, or you're this person, you're that person. It really is the other costumers might go, hmm, I think that's a different shade of chrome. It's more gray than, and it's like, who are you trying to please? So uh, yeah, I couldn't tell you. I honestly couldn't tell you, but to me, it looked a little bit more, um, not as shiny, but the version that I saw was covered in mud. So what can I say? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Um, yeah, RMD Collective is asking, do you think this heavy Mando will be back for Mando season three? I don't know. I don't know. The coven has gone everywhere. Um, they've gone to different places. Uh, Robert Schrader from Mississauga. Well, I hope you brought your passport because we'll be checking them because you've traveled such a long distance. Welcome. Um, oh, Kale. Kale, Caleb Millen, Mil, Caleb Lynn, Caleb Lynn. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you found this channel too. Um, okay, here you go. Oh, so I've lifted him out. I've lifted him out. You don't want to look at my ugly face. Here, check this out. So I've lifted him out. He's super cool. Uh, he's got, of course, the baggy wraps because it's to protect uh, the joints from damage, like from scratching in the box. I'm going to remove the booties. Uh, it always, they always strike me as like either really creepy, like they're, they're, they're in body bags and they're dead or they're about to commit a heinous crime and they don't want to get blood all over them. Uh, okay, again, the detail on this is crazy, crazy, and I love it. I love it. From the weathering, the little chips and dings in the armor, um, the soft goods, the actual stitching, like, holy crap, look, there's an actual insulated hose that is running out <clears throat> running out to his from his flamethrower all the way up uh, he's got the flak vest over top of his flight suit which is gray he's got the cummerbund right the wrap and the the uh, the camera with the look at that and the belt is removable it's a velcro utility belt um, Right? Like that's, that's crazy detailed. From the pouches, 
Um, the armor as well, you can see the flight suit underneath, the gaskets, the knee pads, uh, everything's, everything's artic you can articulate. They even have, look at this, look at this. They have the ankles wrapped in plastic, the feet wrapped in plastic to protect them. Uh, yeah, this is stunning. The head articulation is great. Look at that. I love that, like the little, the dings in the, in the armor here. You can just see how precise and, and the quality of Hot Toys. You can see why these are premium priced figures. Um, there's a lot that goes into this. And this, this is, and this is, this is just the main body right here. This is the main body. I'm just going to zoom it out a little bit. Um, so that's him right there. And then you have, of course, all of the accessories. You have the base stand, right? It says Star Wars, and this says Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, right? It's very, very plain, but it's a nice, solid base in which to place to pose if you choose to. Um, you have a dynamic. This is a dynamic rod. <laughs> and in <laughs> <laughs> it's an inanimate carbon rod, my god, yes! Uh, this is used to, if you want to have him flying, and uh, from uh, it basically gets inserted into the base, and you can connect the heavy infantry mandolin into this, and you can bend it so that it looks like he's, he's, he's actually flying. Uh, so that's the inanimate carbon rod that won the Employee of the Year award. Um, and this is, again, this is a, a, a pose, like a, a clamp to hold him, like with the padding to... to to hold on because basically this is what happens you have this clamp connects to the rod and then you can connect to have him gently gently caress the heavy infantry mandalorian uh and and pose him in a dynamic flying position there so there's that um his jet pack look at that this is rocket pack right here it's stunning just stunning and i love i mean it's the ease of putting it on Oh, it's, okay, it's not magnetized. It isn't magnetized. You have, there's a clip-on system there. Uh, with the Mandalorian, the Beskar Mandalorian, you just, bloop, you just have to pop it on there. But uh, there we go. Uh, just like that. Now he is capable of flight. Which is great. Just very simple. Very simple. I'm going to take him off. Boom. Just like that. And of course, <laughs> Tommy K. Oh, they were about to show some close ups of the rod. That's great. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're releasing a Clone Wars Obi Wan and Anakin, I think. Uh, Sand Panda. And here is his weapon, of course, uh, with like a pleather strap. Look at that detail. Look at that. Uh, carabiners. Metal carabiners. Right? Oh, like an actual... Like mounting hooks. Um, there's there's padding. There's foam... There's foam padding... On this handle. Which is like... I'm wondering if it... If it... If it's movable or not. I'm just gonna... Move this out of the way. Oh, it's for... Yeah, for him to hold on. It's a grip. Basically, to hold on to from one hand and the other. Uh, and this is a flexible... Flexible ammunition coil. So you can have it loop around the back and connect it to his, to his rocket pack. But the, the detail... Look, this is what I love. This is what I love. The bluing on the... The bluing. The bluing. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. But you can see the discoloration, but like... It's... The, those little details there where it looks like it's discolored because it's the the heat it's been overheated because it's been fired so many times and it's left that fantastic I mean that's the level of detail the, there is slight I mean this little d-ring here is amazing amazingly crafted uh, this is fantastic too and these things are so detailed as well that you'll have cosplayers or costumers will buy these and use the 
toys themselves as a frame of reference for their own builds because you can only get so much from screen captures uh, and so they'll go to Hot Toys, they'll purchase them and then they'll, they'll get a chance to, to actually look at some of the, the, um, some of the stitching or the, the materials or how, the, how the, the soft goods are put together and for the weapons you can get like a little miniaturized version that is in scale. So you can measure this and, and make a gun of the proper proportions if, if that's what you want to do. Um, the barrel, uh, Tommy's asking, is a barrel there metal or plastic? It's a plastic. It's mostly plastic. And again, that, that just shows you the quality of the paint job that this, this piece of plastic actually looks like it's metal. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's plastic. The gun is, is mostly plastic. The only metal bits are like, again, these little carabiners <laughs> are there. Uh, one six shooter is saying it's a good looking figure, but it's tough to pose. I would imagine so. I'm wondering, is it, is it just because it's bulky? Is it the flight suit? Uh, somebody mentioned the other day that as lovely as a Mandalorian's flight suit is, it was really limiting in terms of how far they could articulate or move the, the arms and legs. Uh, let me know. Let me know. Um, what happened to Car yeah. Will? What about a Captain Carson hot toy? We'll see. I love you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I don't know. What about it? Um, really cool uh, side note. Anybody, if you watch, uh, if you like hot toys, there's a couple of great YouTube channels that do a far better job than me in terms of reviewing and unboxing. Uh, one of them is Justin's Collections. I was fortunate enough to be a guest on that his YouTube channel. Um, he's fantastic. He's based out of Australia. Um, and uh, I was a, a guest on his 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 show, and um, he surprised me because they're actually working on a custom uh, one six scale uh, Captain Tiva uh, Carson. Tiva. What, why is my, my I can't get this angle? Right. I'm gonna try that. There we go. How's that? That's that. Um, so they're they're actually working on a one six scale Carson Tiva custom figure, and a friend of his is doing the um, is doing the rendering for my head and stuff and uh yeah the, the, he did the first pass and he showed it to me and i was blown away by it so uh, i got to go back on his show and i we, we have to see the progress and i uh, can't wait to share that with you as well because uh, it's cool it's creepy kind of but cool because i could literally be playing with myself <laughs> anyways <laughs> um let's see uh robert Roberto is asking, have you purchased any of the Bandai movie realization Star Wars toys? If you hasn't, they're really great. I, I want to. I want to. Uh, I actually have the the Bandai, um, the ships, a lot of the ships, the versions, and I, I need to put those together. Uh, it's a question of space and time. So I know my wife is watching this, just shaking her head going, oh, I told him. I told him. Space and time. You're right, baby. You're right. But I love you. Uh, <laughs> what's that? Trash is saying, uh, okay, one six shooter is saying, yes, the undersuit is part of it. Yeah. Um, he's big. Like he's, he's, he's a tall one six scale. Like he's, he's big in the show and he's, his toy is big. His figure is imposing and it's, it's heavy, heavy there too. Um, Trash is saying he doesn't really need to pose well. His size gives him enough presence, I suppose. But if you want him in a dynamic sort of, if he's battling, like, you know, on top of a mountain of, of, of stormtroopers or like bodies, you want him to be able to, to pose that way. Um, we got Mitch Studios. I know Hasbro's doing a Trapper Wolf Black Series, so maybe we could get a Cap Carson Black Series soon. Yeah, I wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, I know Dave, I, I, I was bugging Dave after I found out that uh, he's getting a figure. Uh, and he was saying, uh, you know, in true Dave Filoni fashion, he was just, he was deflecting and saying like, hey, you know what, I've been pushing for them to get you a figure and one for Deb, uh, Deborah Chow and for Rick, uh, because they've, of course they played Rebel Pilots too. So they should, they should do a four pack of all of us, either TVC, uh, the Vintage Collection or the Black Series, just like a, a con exclusive or something. I, I think I'd be down for that. I think it'd be fun. Um, Librarian Fawns, we also want a Carson TV in the Black Series too. Thank you so much. Uh, Ray's asking, gaming zombie, sorry, I just call me Ray. Uh, can you ask if that 3D model of your head can be sold? I'd love to print that. I don't know, it's not up to me. It's up to, uh, I, I can ask, I can ask. Um, 
Yeah, Chris, I don't think they... I keep forgetting there's a delay, so I'm getting all these comments later on. <laughs> uh, Chris Christie saying, yeah, he is thick. He's thick. And Joe, oh my gosh, Joe, that's so generous. Thank you so much for that. Um, shut up, Tommy, indeed. That reminds me. Uh, actually, I've got something really excited. We're working on getting a membership uh, structure set up for this YouTube channel uh, to try to help it grow it even more. I've got some really, really cool ideas. Uh, for, for future videos, not only live streams, but actual videos. That's right, we're going to get back into video content. Uh, but what we do want to offer is some extra value for members, people who want to sign up. Um, and we'll have, you know, exclusive stickers, badges, obviously, uh, exclusive live screens, screams, live streams and videos for members. Um, been working really closely with Pigeon Row. We've got some really cool, fun stickers uh, that we're, we're ready to roll. We're going to be ready to roll out, including an infamous shut up Tommy sticker that I'm really, really excited to use and maybe have all y'all use, uh, too. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, do I need a TARDIS? They're bigger on the inside. Uh, that's cool. Uh, Melissa's saying East York semi with a time Lord tech and East York semi with time Lord technology. That's right. You know, I do. I do. Um, I dream one day of having a studio, like just a studio space where I can set up uh, my printers, my 3D printers, have all my collectibles about, have a nice area where I'm not hitting the ceiling. <laughs> I'm in a basement. I'm in my basement. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Um, that That's my dream. So I just keep working towards that. Keep working towards that. Uh, S. DuPont 79 just bought one of your signed autograph cards of the Mandalorian. We need you to do a signing, please. So many Appa images for you to sign as well as Carson Tiva. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm happy to sign anything anybody puts in front of me, uh, except for contracts. Of course, I got to read those first before I sign them. But uh, if you want anything autographed, like honestly, I'm happy to do that. Um, just waiting for the cons to start up so we can really, really start getting back to having fun again and, and connecting with each other face to face. Um, here we go, uh, Caleb, yeah, oh, I would absolutely spend too much money on a figure of you, thank you so much, um, Mike Case is saying, I love posing in dynamic, I love posing in dynamic poses with your figures, but poses take up space, my complete Black Series collection already takes up too much space as it is, sadly, yes, and I'm actually keeping mine in boxes because now they have artwork on the boxes, so it makes it even harder to throw the boxes out. Um, so, and just in the interest of space sometimes too, it's like, it's easier to stack boxes up instead of the loose figures. I mean, you can cram more loose figures in, but then it's just like, God help me if I ever trip on something or knock something over. Cause then it's like <laughs> domino effect. And I think we all know what that's like <laughs> to have that domino effect. Um, oh my God, a one twelve, Yeah. <laughs> a one six size X wing to go with the four pilots would be totally cool. Uh, Bad Wolf Media. Um, oh my god, I'm so far behind. Live screams, live screams. Yeah, I'm way behind. Uh, right. That's right. Yeah, that's right, Mike. If you want to see Paul at your local cons, have the organizers contact me or my, my, my agents and uh, let's get talking. Let's get talking. I'm excited because there's going to be a, a Fan Expo light in October in Toronto, apparently. Um, I still think this year might be a little bit soon. We can have some smaller events, but I think really it's, we're waiting for next year for the big, big ass events to happen. I mean, uh, my eyes of course are on celebration in Anaheim in May. I have, I would love to go. I have no idea if I can go, if I have time for that, but it's a bucket list thing, right? It's a bucket list thing. So we'll see what happens there. Um, uh, one six years saying you got a one six millennium Falcon cockpit. And it's huge, right? Like if you think that this guy is one six scale and he's 12 inches and you want a full size cockpit, it's going to be gigantic. And, and can you imagine a one six scale Millennium Falcon? I mean, even for the, for the, the vintage collection, um, they have, uh, like I've got a Millennium Falcon, 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 Falcon in the back that is ginormous. I mean, it's huge because to, to fit the same scale and it's that's for like 3.75 inch figures and it's gigantic so you need a ton of space uh for that really to to, to have happen 
to display properly to do, even do an unboxing i'm here and i'm like the hot toys is pretty much like the limits of what i can do uh um and it's stretch here like to have a lightsaber everybody heard me like the other week i was hitting the ceiling and, and <laughs> trying to find places and of course Padraig came downstairs and took up half the sofa so there's that um we have here oh uh, thank you so much ray Gaming Zombie Super Chat. I miss Fan Expo so much. Still a bit skittish of it, but if you're going, I'm there. Yeah, man. If we, if you go, I go. We both go. Um, but it's like we're both double dosed, which is great. Um, and just you wear a mask, sanitize your hands, stop touching your face, and uh, we should be okay. We should be okay. And again, the vaccine doesn't uh, reduces the effect if we do catch COVID we don't have to go to hospital and be put on a ventilator. There's still a chance. If you're double vaxxed, even if you're double vaxxed of getting COVID, it's just the vaccines really, really reduce the risk. Uh, not the risk, but the, the, the effect that COVID will have on you. And so far, so good. You know, uh, it's still resistant to the Delta strain as well. The Lambda strain is now out there. And again, these variants, these, these mutations are from the unvaccinated people who haven't been vaccinated yet this is how covid can keep mutating so if you can highly recommend it please get your doses get your doses out there um same makers making a one six snow speeder wow that's cool and again i have i've got the uh vintage collection snow speeder back there that's still taking up a ton of room man it's just if you're a nerd nowadays or a toy collector world is your oyster if you have the space. <laughs> uh, RMD Collective, you're going to be going down to the celebration next year. It'll be your first time. That's fantastic. Hopefully, we'll see each other there. Um, and Dawn, yeah. You haven't been to a con in almost two years. It's been two years already. That's that's incredible. That's incredible to think about. Um, man. Just that, that really puts everything into perspective there, doesn't it? Okay, I'm going to put... I'm going to put... Pre, pre Vizsla, past Vizsla, back in the, back in the hole, back in the hole, and um, I'm gonna take, I'm even gonna keep these little plasticky bits, this is, this is my life now, I feel like I can't throw anything away, but that's cool too, because, you know, it's, it's good for the environment if you keep on to this, you keep holding on to this plastic, right? Keep holding on to the plastic. There we go. Does a heavy Mandalorian come with blast effects for the jetpack? Yes. Librarian fawns. Yes, it does. There you go. And they're really simply simple to insert and to go. Um. <laughs> Caleb, your son keeps responding to me because he thinks this is a FaceTime call. That's, you know, and that's, isn't that cool? That's like, this is the world we live in. I actually caught myself the other day swiping at a magazine cover. Like, I was like, eh. no, no, it's a magazine. You have to turn the page. It's odd. Uh, and we're, we're, you know, we, we have a whole generation of digital natives. They've grown up only knowing digital world, not knowing analog uh, tape physical things like that so that's that's really cool it's mind-blowing um yeah yeah mike bad with me is saying people get used to uh toy scales and i think they forget how big things would actually be at true scale and one six scale millennium falcon would be close to the size of a small car give or take 20 feet yeah absolutely and if you got the space for it sure why not right but the majority of us do not have that uh, Haskan is asking, yo, Paul, how are you? I am well. How are you? Uh, we've got... I'm just going to carefully put this away. You guys ever tried Control plus Z in real life? Disappointing. I would imagine so. If only it was that easy, right? If you just undo. Just undo. Once. Just once. I'm going to do this. Um... just gonna put this away right now heavy mandalorian uh we're gonna let's let's do another informal po uh, poll right now to for next week next week's unboxing i still have captain cody that uh that people took a pass on this week 
I also have a 40th anniversary of Darth Vader Hot Toys. So you can vote right now. Let me know in the comment section what you would rather see unboxed next week, either the Hot Toys Commander Cody or the 40th anniversary, the Hot Toys 40th anniversary Darth Vader, uh, which I was able to, to sort of get online. This is this is it. This is the bah, this is the Darth Vader. Uh, I got this from a seller through eBay. The box was pre-crushed. I'm very disappointed in that. Um, because it was like, whoa, you didn't mention any of that. And then when I looked at that, clicked on the photograph of the item, it actually, you could see it, but the seller did not point it out, which I kind of think is a bit of dirty pool. But at the end of the day, it doesn't bug me that much. Bugs me a little bit. I still would have bought it. I got it for a great price. Uh, but this is what I like. This is, this is why it doesn't bug me as much. Because this actually, this is just a slip sleeve. It's a slip sleeve, and I don't care. Because this is the real money maker right here. Ooh, look at that. This is this is like a retro gaming, not retro gaming, geez. A retro, like, action figure box. And again, so this is, so we can, we can unbox this, or we can unbox a Commander Cody. I think I call him Captain Cody, geez. Commander Cody, let me know in the comments. Let's let's find out. Uh, somebody is saying, steam the crease out. Uh, I think if you steamed it, it would just wreck the box. Uh, I'm cool with it. I just won't look at it very much. Anyways, I'm gonna put it away. I'm gonna put it in the box. But it's, a, it's like, do you agree? Like if you're selling something on eBay, you should be fully transparent. I mean, at the end of the day, it was my responsibility to do my due diligence. But I would think, and I've seen other sellers on eBay point it out, hey, slight crease in, this, in, the, in the slip box. And if it bugs somebody enough and they ask for a discount, then and you want to sell it, you can give it to them. If not, then it's like, it's my choice, but at least then I'm making an informed decision. And it's not nice to get that kind of a surprise. You're like, oh, there's a big ass crease in the box. Um, I, I just think that's only fair. I mean, I still love it. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't affect the inside. What's inside the box is uh -huh. is more valuable. Um, so, like, really, get over it, Paul. But, again, it would have... Uh, because it would have affected the haggling. And, again, in this community, too, if you're reselling, it is in your best interest to keep everything mint in box, right? Nice nice and, and, and well put together and kept together. Uh, like, see what I'm doing? I'm just... I'm putting the plastic bag back on, back on the box. Why? Because just in case, and it protects the box. So I'm just gonna put you over here by the garbage. There you go. What I miss? What I miss while I was blabbering on like a big ass? Um, let's look at some of these votes here. I'm seeing a lot of, seeing a lot of. Okay. Here we go. We got Marshall Pyatt's in the house. Hello. Home Renos. No worries. I hope everything's going well. I've got a Cody. Uh, I've got uh, Cody, Cody. And then, of course, Vader. Ben Eadie is in the basement. You just chatted with Frank. Never thought of it, but I should have been. A... <laughs> that's right, Ben. Frank told me he introduced you to Adam uh, to, to Adam Savage. That's right. So that's it's such a small community. Um, Vader, Vader, Cody. Mm. Vader, Vader's catching up. There's a Darth Vader helmet come off and show cooked Anakin. It does indeed, Tommy. It does indeed. Commander Cody, but now I'm showing Vader. Vader's catching up. Vader, Vader, Cody, Cody. Oh, it's neck and neck. Um, Frank the Los Angeles is asking this is a Kim's convenience related question. Did I really eat the ravioli on the episode title Best Before? No. Didn't swallow one bit of it. However, I did have to chew and spit out at least six cans worth of ravioli. And even though I didn't swallow it, I could taste it for days afterwards. It was, it's just as gross as you imagine. Cold ravioli is, is it's like, there's certain things that are good cold, again, like, uh, I love, I love cold KFC. Like, that's, I, I'll eat that for days. Cold KFC in the morning. Don't judge me. I, I like that because all the fat is congealed and stuff. 
but ravioli tomato based like with the fat can you no no not cool <laughs> not cool not fun lots of vaders vaders coming out vader 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 um yeah it looks like uh uh, Charles Stevens is asking, uh, have I ever got my Kim's co-stars hooked on toy collecting? No. Andrew Fung comes by it honestly. He's the only one. But everybody else, like, are you kidding? I can't see Gene <laughs> collecting. <laughs> I'm sorry. No. No. Nobody else would. Uh, maybe Simu. I mean, he would collect. I'm sure he's got a lot of his own Shang-Chi uh, Shang stuff and can you blame him? I mean, I'd get one of everything if I was a Lego, in a Lego set, right? Um, here we go, Retro's where it's at. Vader, 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 Vader. Packaging is sweet. Yep, Vader. Looks like Vader's winning. Looks like Vader's winning. Did I get the 40th Boba Fett? The Hot Toys version of Boba Fett? No. No, I got... I accidentally ordered like six of the Black Series. I It's, it's a whole other thing. Uh, if you want to hear more about that, you can tune in on Mondays, Toying Around, Kevin Wong's channel. Uh, he, Yoko McCann, and myself, we, we do a recap of the Bad Batch, and he makes fun of me for continually, I mean, that's, it happens. When you're ordering, pre-ordering from different vendors, um, what you do is, like, sometimes you get burned, and your pre-order gets cancelled, or this or that, so you cover your bases to make sure that you're going to get a particular figure, and one of them was the, uh, the elite version of the the um, deluxe version of Boba Fett <laughs> and I ordered from like four different places and they all came through so sorry baby talk about Anna sorry just I could sell them again it's cool it's cool I got this um, uh, not the stream yeah no to steam buy a new one no Mike no that's a terrible enabling thing uh, Cynthia saying you've ironed in steam cardboard and paper before they're totally doable without wrecking the printing. Oh, that's cool Ah, yeah, big ass crease. There you go. That's my wife uh, Okay, bad wolf media is asking here's a deep geek question for Paul and everyone Do you prefer the canon idea of clones being chipped or the old EU version where they were just well trained and consciously following orders? Uh I kind of like the retcon, like the idea of the clones being chipped because that is that is a guarantee then. Like mind control or brainwashing can go so far, but the idea that a chip is physically implanted and actually controlling the clones makes it much more believable But that an entire army could turn on, on the Jedi um, and their allies. So I, I kind of love that. Um, yeah, everybody's agreeing with me. They should The seller should have put that in, a, in, in, in the description. So I feel justified. Uh, Vader, Cody, Cody. Oh boy. Looks like Battle of the EU version. Mitch Studio says the, the EU version, but feels like it would have been a lot more of the Order 66 survivors if it didn't have chips. That's exactly it. So you have to wipe out the Jedi. And to do that, you need this, all the soldiers to follow orders like that. Good soldiers follow orders, right? Um... Cold pizza is another Dario. Yes, cold pizza is awesome to eat too. Um, oh, Cody's coming back. Cody, Cody's coming back and Thomas D is saying yes. KFC cold is amazing like pizza. My man, my man. Thank you so much. Uh, cold fried rice. It gets, it's too um, crunchy, like grainy. I, I, don't, I don't like it when, it's, when fried rice gets too cold. Uh, go Ben oh dude I need to make you a Mandalorian Lego fig yeah I'll I'm not gonna say no to that um, Yoko stays roasting Kevin yeah no she does I love it I love Yoko and uh, she I mean and Kevin you know if you're still on you might not be on uh, you're probably playing baseball he does that on Sundays he plays baseball that's cool um but yeah, he kind of—he's—he's he's a great whipping boy for for because he kind of he points out his own mistakes and he's a great host that way too, right? I think the best hosts are able to laugh at themselves, but it's so much fun to chirp at him because uh, he can take it just like Tommy can take it. Shut up, Tommy! 
And um, yeah, it's like, it's just in the spirit of it. But like Yoko, I love because she is just, she comes out of left field with these sick burns. And it's just like, oh, she went there. And it's it's fun. It's great. Uh, she is so super smart. Um, go. I don't know what's going on. You're talking about, oh, talking about Simu. Okay. All right. So we've done that. Let's move on to something that I, th I think is pretty cool. Somebody asked for it last week, and you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Your ex sheep. How's my day going? My day is going fantastic. It's going even better now because I'm doing something that I love to do, and that's unbox really cool, geeky things uh, with my friends. And so here we are. Um, somebody's asking here... Bad Wolf Media, I have to vote for Cody for next week because if he gets shelved two weeks in a row, he might take it personally. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's neck and neck right now. I'm going to have to go back in and check it out. So let's begin with the premium unbox the, the unboxing of the premium 4K editions of these movies. Like I said before, I've got three Space Jam, Titans of Cult Edition, there's a steel book in there, Battle Royale uh, from Arrow Films. Uh, this version here is like a, an ultimate edition 4K. I've got the Blu-ray version of this and Gremlins. Uh, these are all, this is from Arrow Films. This is from Zavi. It's a company that's based in the UK, but they do have a, a US branch. Um, it's interesting. You can always tell if it's from Europe or the UK when it's got these little, <clears throat> excuse me, interesting little, uh, their, their, their warnings, uh, the stop sign, the branding is, is always a dead giveaway uh, that it's UK based or, or European based, which is great. Um, and uh, you can see there's a big old size difference here between all of them. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Here we go. <clears throat> so Titans of Cult, they've got some really nice premium editions. Usually there is a, uh, it's a lente like it's a, a translucent transparent case. There's a steel book in there, and they always have some sort of little badge or trinket in there. That's that's part of it. Uh, Space Jam, of course, the new version. Uh, the new version, the the sequel came out starring LeBron James. It's currently in theaters, and you can stream it on, on different providers, I'm sure. Uh, but this is the old school Michael Jordan, Bugs Bunny, two dimensional, uh, 3D guy in a two dimensional world with the Looney Tunes gang right here. Um, as you can see. The Battle Royale set is an absolute beast. Beast. Uh, this was a movie, when I first saw it, uh, it... I had to stop. I, I stopped the movie and I started it immediately and watched it a second time automatically. Uh, it is something that was just so viscerally disturbing but intriguing at the same time because I could not help but identify with a lot of the with the main character and, and try to figure out what would I do if I was in a competition where I had to I had to kill my friends to survive really really fascinating and it's based on a novel uh, that rock Japan obviously uh, there's manga about it uh, which is 10 million times more it's more faithful to the book and it's way more disturbing the movie and the movie itself is just so I mean it's hyperkinetic uh, and uh, if you haven't had a chance, check out Battle Royale on it. Uh, you know, a lot of people say as well that The Hunger Games is kind of uh, borrows a lot of the, the the ideas and the tropes from from Battle Royale. And in my opinion, Battle Royale it's, it's a much better uh, series of movies. Um, so there's that. <clears throat> and as you can see here, I mean, it's got the original theatrical version. It's got a special edition, the director's cut of it. And then here's the um, the sequel, which wasn't as good, but our sequels usually there's there's a few that surpass the originals. I'm looking at Star Trek Two. I'm looking at The Godfather Part Two, Aliens. But for the most part, the the sequels aren't as good. Uh, Battle Royale Two: Revenge, a special edition director's cut. You've got the official soundtrack. Uh, you've got trump cards. Hmm. I don't think it means what they think it means. What they, what what we all think it means. Uh, and, of, and of course, there's something else in here, so we'll open that up next too. And of course, one of my favorite uh, Robert Zemeckis films, Steven Spielberg movies, Gremlins. Uh, there you have Gizmo on the front. There's Stripe right there. 
Um, this is a special edition. It's got the movie in it and uh, some some of the really cool like title cards and whatnot. Now, <clears throat> this this was shipped by Zavi, and I have to say I was kind of disappointed because I don't know if you can see that, but it came and the box was crushed. There was very little padding, or there was like one sort of lame air pillow in there, um, and it was it looked water damaged, and it looks like there's water damage all throughout this. Uh, there you can see you can see the ripples right there. Uh, and that was disappointing. Zavi has usually done a really good job. Like this came via Zavi, and it was it was in a nice hard case cardboard box, uh, like cardboard like sleeve or envelope, and it was pretty cool. But uh, yeah, this was every once in a while you get you get a clunker like that. So I'm I'm hoping it's just water damaged on here, but I think it's uh, I think it's the actual case itself. So <clears throat> we're gonna put this to this, put this aside. Okay, I'm going to open this up, and this is Titans of Cult. Titans of Cult, celebrating the iconic cinema through unique home video releasing featuring newly created artwork paired with thoughtfully curated collectibles. This two-disc set includes Space Jam 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray edition, a collectible steelbook case, which I love, a unique enamel pin, and exclusive vinyl stickers. So I'm going to, I always, I always open my stuff on the bottom, uh, just so it, it, in case I screwed up, uh, it's not visible because if it's sitting on the bottom end, a lot of, there's like the corners here, which I love to, to sort of pick on right there. Always cut away from yourself. There we go. And then there's a seam. So you can follow the, follow the seams. Right like that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just like that. Ooh, shiny. That's great. It's a really, it's, a, it's got a lovely effect to it. Obviously, it's like a 3D effect just because of the the, the concentric rings of the circles, which <clears throat> Porky Pig usually goes, bidi, 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 that's all, folks. Right there, it's, this is the, uh, again, this is the, the title card that is usually just hot glued onto the back you can just yeah, gently remove that there you go Ooh, so there's the back of that there too that's pretty that's the back of the steel book and as you can see it's got the uh, they've got the little dabs of, of tacky glue that's on there this is I usually just chuck this um, it doesn't add value I find and uh, yeah but you can keep it as well because it, it does actually give specifications on here. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, space, 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 space jam. Uh, let's open it up. That's all. Oh, I always hate doing that. I always feel like I, I don't want to. You bend it so it, uh, along the creases, so you don't want any crinkles in here. But sometimes it's just like you can see how it wants to just it wants to just buckle in the center, and I, I hate that feeling. So I'm gonna see if I can I can't slide this out like that. There we go. And then here's the reveal. Ooh, that's pretty. Look at that steel book. This is I I. You know, steel cases, I'm a sucker for them. It's it's like I there's something about that that I really, really love. This this design, this artwork is great. Very simplistic, very reminiscent of obviously of the Air Jordans. His you know, uh, Michael Jordan's sort of logo there that are iconic. Um open this up now. Get out of the way, I'm gonna close this blade so it falls off, it doesn't cut me. Uh, we have, here we go, vinyl stickers, Toon Squad, and there's another one behind it. <clears throat> oh yeah, the Toon Squad and the Monstars, which are the, the opponents. That's great. So a couple of really cool vinyl stickers in there. 
I'm going to keep you in this case, or perhaps I'll stick you on, on my my Mac Mini that I'm decorating with, with stickers. I've, I've gotten into putting stickers on my laptop and stuff, doing what the kids do. Um, okay, so you have the two discs, 4K version, the Ultra HD. Lovely thing about 4K, if you have a 4K player, is it is not, it's not region locked. So a 4K movie will, from anywhere in the world will play on your player. Um, some Blu-rays, people might have uh, experienced this. If you get a Blu-ray from the UK, for example, that's region B and it's region B locked. And unless you have a region free Blu-ray player, you won't be able to play it on your, your Blu-ray player at home. Uh, in North America, we're region A. Europe is region B, Asia is region C and then D and E. And I think it's stupid. Geo-locking movies is ridiculous and that's why people pirate stuff all the time. Um, I think honestly, just have them region free. Everything should be region free. If people want it, they're gonna get it. You're just gonna lose sales by geo-locking things. But anyways, uh, I digress, but this is, so we have here the, the ultimate, the ultra HD 4K version. Um, again, this is this is a UK. Uh, this disc originates from the UK, but I can play it on my on my uh, my 4K player at home, which is cool. And of course, underneath here, now here's the other thing. This is the Blu-ray version of the disc. <clears throat> so this is Blu-ray. This probably won't play on on my my player at home, and you can also verify that by checking the card. Blu-ray, oh my god, it's come to this. So it's come to this. <sighs> Damn, beauty glasses. I'm, I'm becoming more and more like Hapa. Jesus, help me. Uh, 4K, yes, yes, yes. What's the region, dudes? Sound, DTS Master. Uh, for the audio files out there, it comes uh, in a um, 1080p high definition, 2.4 to 1 DTS HD master audio, 5.1 Dolby Digital Castilian Spanish, 5.1 in Danish, it's 2.0, it's just stereo. Finnish, it's in 2.0. French, you get 5.1. So German as well, Italians as well, Latin, but it doesn't say, where is it? Where's the region? Well, if it doesn't say region, I will check on the disc. And on the disc, I don't know. It doesn't say. Wow, the instructions have betrayed me. I'm sure I'm not. I'm just missing it somewhere. I'm sure I'm just. I am just missing it. So, damn it. Somewhere on this thing that I missed all of these all of these comments I was wondering why the comment section had stopped and now <laughs> I miss so many yes the aspect and frame rate used to be a big big reason PAL versus NTSC now it's more about weird licensing contracts for no real reason yes yeah uh, blu-ray main feature it does not say whether it's region locked so I'm guessing if it doesn't say this it's not, it, it's gotta be region free. Cause it doesn't, usually it'll say region B somewhere or region A or whatever, and I'm not seeing it. So, well, only one way to find out and that's just like trying it, right? So, but I got the 4K version, so I don't care. Uh, all right, so this is, again, so again, this is beautiful, beautifully done. This is the the steel book case, look at that shine. Look at that, it just, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping they're not region locked because that, that would be cool. And inside also you have, there is a collectible enamel pin, which is from the tray A-OK. -okay. I don't know why I did that. I didn't need to. Did not need to. 
It's uh, you know, I'm not gonna spend my time trying to pop it out. You can just press that bubble, but it's an A okay little little badge. The significance of it, uh, I forget. Can anybody tell me the significance of this A okay uh, badge? I don't know. I got a super chat from Mike Yuan. Nice. Thank you, Mike. So watching Kim's for podcast research and the whole time I was waiting for a shut up, Tommy. Upper railing on Gerald was the silver medal. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, bye, Caleb. Thank you so much. Feed your kids. Feed your kids. Because um, you have to. By law. Uh... <clears throat> Okay, so that's that is that is Space Jam, 4K edition. Look at see how it just slides in like it just fits in like that, and it slides right back into the case, which is what I'm doing right now. There you go, beautiful case. Uh, this again, I ordered through Zavi, Z A V V I dot com. Uh, check it out; they've got some really cool collectibles. Um, if you're into premium movies, um, it's a really neat site and I'm really glad I found it. Uh, because again, this is, this is something that, that uh, it's cool. Like I collect movies and so it's nice to get something that's, you know, a beloved movie that I don't, uh, that I don't have a regular version of that I can get a premium format. So that's, that's great. That's really cool. Um, <clears throat> Let's go to the next one. What, is, what are these comments? Roadrunner and Coyote, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, yeah, you think that Colin J is saying that perhaps it was, uh, let's go back. Perhaps it was the, uh, the, the, the pin, the enamel pin was from Coyote and Roadrunner. Possibly. Possibly. Uh, Tommy K, Gerald and I have a support group we go to weekly. They call it the place we go to cry. <laughs> Shut up, Tommy. All right. Um, all right. Battle Royale is next. Battle Battle Royale. This is a beast. It's heavy. It's heavy. And uh, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Let's open this. <gasps> Looks like it's already been pre... Oh, no! The resale value is ruined. That's the other thing, too. There are people who will collect... Um, get this out of the way. There are people who will collect uh, movies as premium format movies and not open them either uh, because they're worth more if they're still wrapped. Um, and I know people who buy multiple copies, like they'll buy the, the plain or the, the, the regular retail version of uh, a movie to watch, but they'll keep the premium in a, in a nice box, uh, keep it set. So again, this is, it's got the wrap around the top uh, and very this is I like this they used one of these tabs to connect it instead of the glue I'm not a fan of the glue especially on uh, cardboard stock just because it discolors it like the, the the temperature of the glue sometimes it'll leave a mark uh, or a stain and that bugs me and so this is much preferable it comes right off you can't even see it now for Space Jam, it's fine on here because, again, it's 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 a it's a plastic and acrylic, so you're not going to get that stain in there, right? But for for the majority of other movies, like an I've had it, where it's just like ah, you ruin the finish of, of this box. So this the box art here again is beautiful. Uh, Tommy, you're asking where I order the Battle Royale set from? Uh, Arrow Films, ArrowFilms.com. It's they're right here. Arrow Video. Uh, they do a number of, they got a number of really, really cool uh, collectibles, uh, premium movie sets. Um, I've also, I also ordered through Shout Factory, which is great. And they've got, um, I got to show you some of my Shout collectibles. I got uh, a collector's edition, a sweet collector's edition of They Live that came with a NECA um, Frank, uh, which is the character played by Keith David. And I also got a, a poster, a mini movie poster and a vinyl um, mini mini vinyl uh, record of the soundtrack by John Carpenter, and it came in a beautiful, beautifully simple uh, box, like all black with uh, uh, inlaid. I mean, it was just stamped on the title of the movie, and it was it was great. So, 
Arrow Films, check them out. Shout Films, Zavi, three really great places to, to look for, for premium format. And of course there's Nova Media and there's Manta Lab. Uh, all these really cool things that you can you can check out too if you like collecting these movies. Um, let me go. I'm just gonna. I'm just reading up on on some of these comments here. There. Uh, what local Chris Christie's asking? What local Toronto stores do I recommend for collectible newbies uh, to browse? Your downtown and travel via TTC. Uh, you know what? <sighs> There used to be a bunch of places, like if you check out Bay Blue, not Bay Blur, um, Bay Street Video was cool. They used to have like, Suspect Video was great, but they're gone. Like a lot of these places, a lot of these brick and mortar places, they're gone now. And so the majority of the stuff that I get that is premium and, and whatnot, um, you order online. You find, uh, you go direct to source. I know Nova Media, they have a website. Uh, and these things go like stink. If you can have somebody who's on the ground floor who knows when these releases are coming out, the pre-orders, they go fast. Uh, it's like anything that you collect a lot. There's a big sort of audience for that and a big group of people who will just snap that up really quickly. Um, BM, BMV is a great place if you just want to build up a collection of stuff. In fact, I have, because I've upgraded from Blu-ray to 4K, I've got like boxes of Blu-ray uh, movies, great movies, mint condition, always take care of them. Um, then I'm going to try to to resell the BMV um, just because I don't need them anymore. And I've, I've tried donating movies to the library and to different organizations, but a lot of them won't take them, which is surprising, especially the library. I was blown away by that. They would not touch my movies. And the reason they gave me was because they can't verify what's on the discs. So it's like, Okay, do you, when you get a book, do you read the book, all the books to make sure the book's cover matches the story? I, it didn't make sense to me. And so the only thing that I can think of was like, you know, oh no, my hardcore metal porn, torture porn scheme is done now. How can I get people from the library to do that? Sorry, my, my notifications are going off. I'm going to turn that off right now. Um, it's like, oh no, what am I going to do? They got me. It, it's kind of, I thought it was ridiculous. I think there's a huge demand for these movies um, that people, they deserve that entertainment. And if they can't afford streaming, I think the public library is a fantastic resource for people to go to, to get books, to get access to the internet, to have access to entertainment too. And um, you know how they have the little mailboxes that are, uh, you know, the little mini libraries that say, you know, take a book, leave a book. I kind of want to do that with movies and say hey take a movie leave a movie type thing so we'll see what happens with that uh joaquin king hello miss hi mr kim hey how's it going um i'm just trying to do this <clears throat> silver snail oh you know what if if that's what you're talking about nerd collectibles yeah sorry my brain just went for movies of course yeah silver snail is a great place um, there's a place, Treehouse Collectibles, EB Games, um, any place where you can get comic books, basically. A lot of them will have a small collectible session, section, uh, some really gay, there's a place called Gotham Central out in Mississauga. If you can get out there, it's well worth your time, which is a lot of fun too. Um, NMC Toys in the East End, and, uh, yeah, just, you can, you can Google it, even. Like, just do a search. And some really, really cool things are up there. But Silver Snail is definitely one of them, which is fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, once these places start to open up again, I, I like going in and, and looking at the collectibles, like being, like, face-to-face -face with them. Because shopping online is kind of fun, but it's mostly... I need to be able to see it, the scale of things, too. Um, sorry, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so let's, let's get back to let's get back to Battle Royale. Uh, here we go. So it's got the art, the cover art on the front. This is uh, in the movie. It's uh, basically the classroom. For those of you who don't know, the premise of the movie is basically it's set in Japan and unemployment is at record highs. There are people who are not working. The economy is crap. And uh, children in schools or in high schools are starting to rebel because they don't see they have a future. And so the government enacts the Battle Royale Act. And it's basically what they do is to keep the children in line, they will randomly select two high, like a high school class. 
and they are dropped off at a location, uh, placed, um, basically forced to kill each other, and to soon like they they place an explosive device around their neck with a collar, and they have three days. Uh, they are all given something, a random pack with a weapon or stuff in it, and they have to survive basically three days, and it's last person standing, and you see the best and the worst of humankind. You see kids and their kids who are trying to make sense of what's going on and it's it's horrifying but it is really sort of a, a really fascinating look at um, the dynamics that human beings uh, will, will will take when they're facing a situation like that and with children especially because it's it's very in the immediacy of it too is 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 frightening because children usually don't they don't they cut to the chase, right? There's not too much posturing about. They just, it's yes or no. They go to that. And so to examine that was, was chilling, chilling. Um, let's look at the back again. Yes, this is, so this is the class. This is a, also, this is cool. This is a cast of characters. Uh, this is the classroom. These are all the kids and there's 49. There's uh, divided between equally between female and male. And uh, when you're limited, of course, and it's done for entertainment. So they have, they will have announcements uh, whenever a student gets killed. Like this, you know, this, 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 this child from the class has been eliminated and they'll read them out. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty dark. And again, this is the, the symbol of Battle Royale. Okay, I'm going to pull these out now. So this is... Look at the artwork. Right on. So this is uh, again. This is the original, the the theatrical version of the movie, right? Oh, that's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. It's got a an inserted booklet as well. Love that. It's just cast and crew. Yeah, third year class B, Shiroya, junior high school, boys, girls, uh, Takeshi Kitano, who's like a legend. Um, for those of you as well who might recognize him from Most Extreme Elimination, <laughs> he's one of the hosts on that. But he's also one of Japan's most celebrated actors. Um, this is, oh, this is fascinating. This is really, really fascinating. And so, yeah, no, no spoilers. No spoilers, but it looks like this is worthy of. This reminds me of a Criterion release. It looks it's very in depth. Uh, this actress starred Quentin Tarantino was so taken by her performance in this movie he cast her in Kill Bill as Gogo. -Go. Uh, this is actually stuff from the sequel, which wasn't so good, right? But this is wow. This is an all. This is really, really in depth. It's lovely. This is lovely. Um, Takeshi Kitano. Yeah, sorry, I screwed up the name. Sorry, Kenji. Um, Kawada. That's that was the character's name. He was one of the uh, exchange students that was brought in. He was kind of like one of the dark horses who's added to the class along with another character. I haven't seen Battle Royale in a number of years, but this is again. And here is the special edition, the director's cut, which uh, I've seen, and it's basically it's more in depth into in terms of uh, what the class was like. There's a little bit more stuff from the book that's added in. There's a basketball game that they play that was cut from the theatrical version. Um, this looks like oh yeah, it's a poster. Wow. This is And now that's, that's a tagline that got me. Could you kill your best friend? Um and I immediately was just I saw this when HMV was still around. And I remember getting this movie 
Uh, I went to the HMV, the flagship store, 333 Dundas. Um, and like, what is this movie? I'd never heard of it before. And uh, picked it up. And uh, yeah, sat home and just totally got blown away by it. It's just, again, this is the... Um, so this is the island that they're on and it's a grid pattern. And each of these sections becomes a, like a, a, a basically a, a danger zone. And uh, if you cross into it, your, your collar explodes. And so that's how they kind of force all the players together. So you can't just hide in one area of, of the island and, and, and try to like wait for it to, to, to blow over. They, they force you to engage with each other by, by making the area that you, that you can travel in safely smaller. Uh, again, this is Battle Royale. This is the original uh, Part 2, Battle Royale 2 Requiem. Which really wasn't... It, it, it takes place right afterwards. One of the characters, a couple of the characters from the first movie make an appearance in this one. Um, I was a bit disappointed in it. Uh, I actually ended up buying a bootleg version of this because uh, I could not... Couldn't find... Um, I mean, and I wanted to pay for it, but I couldn't find a North American copy of it. And... Here's the thing, when we're going to talk about region codes, this is only available on Blu-ray, and it's region B. Region B. So I cannot play this version on my player, which really sucks the big one. Uh, and that's unfortunate. Uh, I will console myself by the fact that it is the second movie, though, so I'm not missing as much, but <laughs> it would still be that um robert's asking if takeshi Mike was the director no um is uh it's sorry his name was in there in the poster i don't want to miss kinji fukasaku kinji fukasaku um yeah no and he's, he's actually he passed away and his son directed if i got this correct his son directed the sequel um, so that's, that's the unfortunate thing. And special edition director's cut. Again, yes. This Suki Sakurai. And it is a dreaded region B as well. So I can't even watch the special edition director's cut. Ugh. And here we have the official soundtrack. Whoa. Does anybody have a CD player anymore? I think we have one kicking around. Uh, we don't even have a CD drive, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Gary's saying I'll need to buy the Anchor Bay release for Region A. Yeah, or what I might do is just invest in a region-free Blu-ray player, because um, there is that too. And of course, oh, here we go. Love this guy. Love, love, love this actor. Love this actor. And again. I'm sorry, I mispronounced. Like I, I got the, I got his name wrong. <laughs> Kitesh, Takeshi Kitano. I want to see him right there. And these are, and he, he plays Kitano. Uh, these are the trump cards. Now let's see what this is about. Let's see what this is about. These, these are just. I'm sure these are uh, the card stock. And I'm worried about how do you open this without. Without creasing it. Oh, that's a good thing. Ghostbusters XX13 saying, can't you play it on the Xbox or PlayStation? They should allow you to play all regions. We'll check that out. You can check that out on my, on my, uh, you can see inside and I've creased it. Ugh. Which is why I hate these things are so tightly packed sometimes. There is another red case inside. Ooh, that's dark. And uh, yeah, they are. Ooh, it's like a box break. Look at that. They're cards. They're actual cards. I got a super chat from Ron, Robert, Robert Donatello. Thanks for the clarification. Oppo makes a region-free Blu-ray player. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot about that. Um, this is Arrow Films again. World of all this is one of their poster cards. But uh, so here are the actual cards. We can do a box break. 
that's cool. They're good quality cards too. Right up there, they feel like they feel like playing cards. They do feel like playing cards. Hold on a second, I'm just gonna move this down here. Thank you so much to uh Thank you so much for that super chat. That's that's amazingly generous of you. I really appreciate that. All the money from the super chats goes right back into the channel, so I can start creating really cool con content. And um, again, I'm excited about the membership uh, tiers that we're going to be offering there, just because we're really going to up the game. I got this great idea, really cool idea. I think everybody will enjoy uh, for a YouTube channel um, that I'm going to going to work on, and hopefully we'll be able to post uh, in August. Um, so I'm going to somehow cheat the system by doing that. Because I like to keep the bands. Keep the bands together. Ha <laughs> ha! The perfect crime. That's one. And we'll do that too. This. That. Okay, let's do the box break. Let's do it. Okay. So here. The cards, Battle Royale, right there. And the first card is the rules. They explain the rules of the game for Battle Royale. Congratulations, you are the lucky class. And that's the thing. There are moments of sheer... Uh, come on, come on. There are moments of satire in this where it's just unbelievable because they have to watch this instructional video by a, an uber cheery um, host to show how exciting and how lucky they are, right? And uh, this is actually, this is a game it looks like. Uh, I gotta get my damn readers out. Ugh, so lame. And it says, shuffle and divide cards evenly between all the players. Any surplus cards are to be placed in the middle to be won in the first hand. The player on the le left of the dealer to choose a slot to compare their topmost card. Invite other players to compare the same slot on their card. Collect all the players' cards if your slot is highest. Start a new round with the winning player calling out a slot. It looks like slut, but it says slot. Um, place everyone's cards in the middle if there's a tie to be won the next round. Play multiple rounds until one player has all the cards. Life is a game, so fight for survival, and you'll find out if you're worth it. This is, this is cool. This is really cool. So these, this is an actual game, card game that they've included here with uh, with this. And then you have, yeah, Akamatsu, Keita, Jima, and they have their battle rating, right? His weapon, the ranking, and how he gets killed in the movie, right? Same thing, right? Kete Ijima, Oki. I remember some of these deaths. Like, yeah. Oda, Kawada. Right, he's he's the uh, he's a, he's the new exchange student. He gets a Spaz 12 shotgun, right? Kiriyama, who is like absolutely batshit crazy. Uh, and he's he's the the psychopath, right? Right. Koninobu doesn't even make it out of the class. Oh, sorry, spoilers. Um, yeah, so these are all the students. And this is all the males in the class. Which is really, really cool. And um, I'm going to hazard that the other deck is all the females in the class. Right? And they're all... Yeah. Inada, Utsumi... Ito, Ogawa, right? Kanai, Kitano, Yukiko. Yeah, they're all the uh, all the girls in class. She's nuts. Um, but you should honestly, people should watch watch the movie. Uh, you get invested. You get so invested in these characters, uh, and it is, and they come again. The cards came again in this really uh frightening looking red <laughs> but it's great they, they look great really really look great uh card set uh i'm gonna read some of these 
4K player do yeah, 4K players do play. They are backwards compatible, but they're not always region compatible. Uh, I have a 4K player. It plays Blu-rays as well. Uh, but again, if it's region locked and your player doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't play with that, then you know you can't. It's not region free. I was really hoping ours would be region free, but they're not. You know what? I'm not going to be able to do that right now. So I'm just going to put you away, put you away like that. Put the bands. We'll put the bands back together another another way. You stay there. This. Okay, so that is. Oh wait, there's one thing left. One thing left. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Check this out. It's a hardcover book. It's a lovely hardcover book. And if that first booklet wasn't enough, you've got, oh, Kinji Fukasaku, Man of Rage by Tom Mess. And it is a book about the director. And it's got lovely thick stock, the pages. Um, yeah, this, gi this gives Criterion a huge run for its money in terms of content and in terms of a deep dive. In the, in the background, this is this is Criterion Collection worthy. Um, loving this, loving this. Yep, it's it's about the director and his CV and what he's done. Wow. Whoop. And it ends with the battle royale. That's really cool. So that's that's I mean the value of this alone is cool. Like I, and I love that too. When you have extra features where you can do a deep dive into a movie that you love, man, it's awesome. Um, Ghostbusters XX13, you gotta go. All right, well you have a great one. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. Um, Tommy K saying Battle Royale and the sequel is on Amazon Prime for those who don't want to go out and buy the movie. That's fantastic. I have Amazon Prime. That means I can watch it without having to buy it. Or a Blu-ray player, like a, like a region-free Blu-ray player. So, ha-ha. I win, Arrow Films. I win. I'm going to put this back. I'm going to put this back. John Woo was a big fan of uh, Fukasaku. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm... There we go. There we go. And I've bent it. So there you go. That and the booklet itself. Battle Royale. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I know, right? What a mook. Come on. Get it in there. What are you, new? Woo, that was fun. That was fun. This is, again, one of my favorite movies from the from the early 2000s. Or the 90s. It was the early 2000s. Yep. All right. And now, here we go. Um, questions, questions, questions. Yeah, CJ, I know. Region free blue air player. Quiet. My wife's watching. You can get me trouble. Tommy's asking, Paul, how often when you're watching TV and come across a movie you love and you watch it on TV, even though you have the 4K sitting right on your shelf? Yeah, no, there there is it's like the rules, right? If you're flipping through and like the Godfather's on, you gotta stop and watch it, right? If Jaws is on, you gotta stop and watch it. Wherever it's at, uh aliens. But what gets me is there we have enough channels now that just show the movies without commercials. But if it's on AMC or any of these other networks that show commercials, I'll be like, nope, I'll stop it and I'll grab the 4K version of it so I don't have to watch the crappy HD pixelized version of it on the screen. And I'll, I'll just, I'll sit and watch it. Because if I'm going to watch it anyway, I don't want to see commercials anymore and I want like the best picture quality. So I'll do that. Uh, Colin J is asking, how are you touching all that? It was blood on it. You got scammed, I think. Somebody opened it and then resealed it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and then racing, the last box that you bought was a Friday the 13th one. And that is a beefy boy, well worth the money. Yeah, we got that too. And uh, we actually, uh, we, we did a marathon. We watched 
all of them. Did we watch it? No, we didn't watch. We stopped. We stopped short of it's Freddy versus Jason. That's the only one left. But we, we watched up to Freddy, uh, Jason X in space. And then we had to take a bit of a break. But, I, you know, Friday the 13th Part 5 was a garbage dump. Um, part 8, where he goes to Manhattan, was a garbage dump. Um, but, anyways, here we go. This is our uh, final movie, Gremlins. Thank you so much again, Robert, for the very generous uh, super chat. It's much appreciated. Love you, man. Um, here we go. Now, this is it's all water damaged. So I kind of don't care anymore. This is also, it's the wrap. So I'm hoping that it just, that took the brunt of it. I'm not holding my breath though. Oh, that came off far too easy. That came off far too easy. Uh, don't get this box wet. Yeah, and that was the other thing, right? Of all the boxes you're gonna get wet, it's gonna be the Gremlins one. But at least, you know, if it multiplied into like pristine copies of it, that would be cool. Alas. It did not, and uh, yeah, it's it's looking it's not looking good. And let's see, let's see, let's see. That's got that it's got that glue, that crappy glue that I hate. Like on, it's not too bad. Uh, it's not too bad in terms of the discoloration. Yeah, definite water damage. Uh, oh, you know what? The box itself isn't too bad. It's a bit crushed in on the corners, which is a bit of a downer, but it's not as bad as I thought. You can see here, for sure there was water damage. Um, you can see the stains right there. But luckily, it looked like this slip cover took the brunt of it, took the bullets for it. Now it's also because this is a much thicker sort of stock. You can see a little bit of the, st the rippling here. But again, that's that's not as noticeable. Um, that's actually the print of his leg. This bugs me. I mean, if I'm paying premium shipping costs, put it in a better container. Like, don't put it in a, a box that can get crushed and sat on and, and and soaked. But first world problems, right? First world problems. All right, let's let's take a look. Let's take a look. Yeah, the Alien Quadrilogy set, Don, is is great. Really great, really beautiful. I'm, I'm waiting for the uh, 4K versions. The 4K remastering of Alien is spectacular. Loved it. It's so crisp. Okay, so we've got... Ooh, that's pretty. So you have your, your 4K boring ass sort of, right? It's got the Amory case. You've got your 4K version here, your Region B locked, I'm sure, uh, Blu-ray version of Gremlins. Here, uh, these signifiers are here, dead giveaway. They're from the UK, from Europe, they're from Region B. Um, put my glasses on my head. And it, uh, 106 minutes, Blu-ray feature, it's all got all the sound, yada, yada, yada. Nothing again as to the region, whether it's region locked or not. Okay, so if it doesn't say if it's region locked, I'm going to assume that it's not. Uh, but it doesn't matter because I actually do have the uh, the, the, the 4K player. Um, is Gremlins 2 included? Uh, I don't believe so. No, I think Gremlins Two is different. is is a different. Uh, they would they would have the features for the other movie, and it would say Gremlins One and Two and or Two. So I, I'm saying this is this is not, and it's okay. That's okay. If they do another special edition for the Gremlin set, I'll 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 be happy with that. So you get this really cool booklet. It's nice, nice quality, shiny. It's a magazine, magazine quality. This reminds me of the old Starlog magazines, right? And there's there's Gizmo, Billy, and uh, the Phoebe. Oh my God, I had such a crush on Phoebe Cates. Um, Hoyt Axton, Key Luke. 
right? The mom. Uh, Brian Schoenfeld is asking if I've ever been to Buffalo to get wings. If you haven't, you should go to Duff's once the borders opens. Absolutely. I love going to Buffalo. We I've gone on a one shopping trip to get movies because they have more 4K steelbook movies uh, at the Best Buy in the States than they do in Canada. For whatever reason, Canada does not carry that many uh, steelbooks. And uh, I went on a trip two years ago with Gaming Zombie Rob... Uh, not Rob, Jesus. It's because of Rob Zombie. Gaming Zombie Ray and uh, my buddy Winton. And uh, yeah, I picked up some really sweet deals on 4K movies. Uh, this booklet, it looks like it's just, yeah, it's just like a, a yearbook. Uh, lots of publicity stills. Screen grabs from the movie. Look at that, she's so cute. Um, and I guess that's Robert Zemeckis, the director. Right. Look how small that crew is. That's a pretty small crew. Um, yeah, very, very cool. And um, we have here an envelope. Can I, can I have the envelope? We have, ooh, stock cards. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching scary movies. This was a great movie. Oh, Stripe, you rascally rabbit. Did I repeat everything? Huh. Okay, so you have the four, four postcards and... Ray saying, longest unboxing for three movies ever, but you love it. Good. You're getting value. I'm not just over saying, this is all you got. Get out. I, I'm actually conversing. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, yeah. This is the original poster for Gremlins. That's great. Oh, Joe Dante. Joe Dante. He directed Gremlins. Of course. Of course. I have failed. I'll hand in my nerd card on my way out. I'm sure everybody's pointed that out. Um, so those are the three movies right there. Three great movies. Three really fun box sets. Digging it. Digging it, loving it. So we've got Gremlins, Battle Royale, and Space Jam. Those are three premium box sets that I'm very happy to have in my collection. Uh, love it, love it. Highly recommend all these movies. If you haven't seen them, do yourself a favor in doing that. Um, Ray's got a super chat. Uh, stop calling me Rob, damn it. It's because it's, I said, it's like Rob Zombie. You're gaming zombie, so I'm going Rob Zombie. That's what I was wondering why I'm like, why am I calling him Rob? It's Ray. Because your name is R A Y. R O B. Very close. You picked the game gaming. Z Shut up, Ray. There, I did it. I did it. <laughs> uh, Chris Christie has a, a steel book. Big Lebowski. Welcome to the club. That's a good one now. The Big Lebowski. Um, Dan's asking, did a copy of Gremlins come with a free frozen yogurt? No. I feel kind of ripped off now. And the winner is La La Land. <laughs> Shut up, Tommy. <laughs> oh, God. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Everybody's mystery box, mystery box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? Shall I open it? Shall I open the box? Um, should I? Yes? Yes. And we've all seen Roy Chow in Indiana Jones. Um, yeah. What's in the box? Do, do, do. The mystery box. It's a mystery. <laughs> 850, we're coming up on a two hour mark. Thank you so much everybody for who's, who's stuck around, who's watching this. Um, I can't say this enough. Sunday Fun Boxing is 
the funnest day of the week for me. And uh, if I could do two unboxings a week, I would. Um, people are guessing. I can see people already guessing right now. Uh, Trash is asking, saying, recently got, oh, you got Steelbooks for Blade Runner 2049, Transformers the Movie 1986, yes, and The Breakfast Club. That's awesome. Um, Star Marvel saying Karate Kid has an awesome steelbook. That's great. Thomas D is he's guessing this is a lightsaber. No, it's not. Good guess, though. It's the right shape. Uh, okay. Everybody's like, yes, please, hurry up. Hurry up, old man. Um, Ten minutes before. Oh, that's right. Okay. All right, so we're going to go. We are going to go. Um, this is actually something that is... Uh, I find as I get older, I, you, you appreciate more. Uh, this is something that I already have a couple of, and uh, this is the newest one, so I'm, I'm very happy to kind of share it and unboxing it with you. So, this is, what is in the box? What is it? What could it be? What is it? Ooh, it's wrapped. It's wrapped in something. Move these movies out of the way. Maybe I should wait. Maybe I should wait until we get X number of viewers. And then once I do that, then I can open it up. What do you guys think? Should I? Nope. Okay. All right. All right. I'll stop. Let's get, get back to it. Uh, any guesses? Any guesses what this is? Any guesses? Somebody saying it's a custom figure. Somebody saying maybe it's something from Star Trek. A screen used blaster. I know. I know, don't be a tease. I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to. Rude. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna unbox it. I'm going to. Oh, oh. Oh, it's wrapped in paper, too. It's wrapped in. Jordi LaForge reading glasses. No. No. Anybody guess? Anybody got any more guesses? Anybody? Anybody? Nail biting. Right. Something Star Trek security officer. Nope. It is not. A security officer autograph. <laughs> That's right, Yoko. That's right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna pull it out of its case. Off camera. Off camera. Okay. So it's gonna. Twelve inch figure. Nope. Not a twelve inch figure. It's not. It's not. No. These are these are great. These are great guesses. It's not. This is a boy. You're gonna be really disappointed, I think, when you see this. Uh, I don't know. X-ray specs. Now a lot of you are going, what the hell is that? What is that? What is that, old man? What is that? Pipe, a plant. This is, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> it's a CSA. This is a Canadian Screen Award. Uh, this is Canada's version of uh, the Emmy and the Oscar. And uh, I was fortunate enough to, this is my third one. Uh, I got it for best uh, lead actor in a comedy series. Um, I won my first one back in 2017. Uh, was completely... Um, shocked by that and you know i was not expecting to win it at all and so to get my first one was a dream come true the next year i was fortunate enough to win another one and you know the second time you win it you're like oh my god like the the, the first time feels like a dream the second time you're like i can't believe this has happened again the third one i think for me is i appreciate it way more because i know how difficult it is to get one of these and this could be my last one ever um, and so I'm insanely grateful for receiving this. And so I did a, the Academy, they, I got this uh, uh, email from them saying, hey, we want to do a, a portrait of you and, and you can pick up your award at the same time. And so this is, this is something that I honestly never thought, and I say this a lot, I honestly never think I'm going to get to do these things. And um, like this, this is, it's such an honor to get one of these it's it's got weight to it um uh, and again it, it's something that you really appreciate um and you know we don't do it for the awards we don't do what we do uh for any of that we do it because you know 
we want to work and we want to do good work. Uh, but when you get recognized by your peers uh, for your work, it's it's a tremendous feeling. And um, to, to, to get one of these, honestly, is... is um, I've been fortunate. I've been very fortunate. You have... I got to live out a lot of my dreams come true. I got to be on a Mandalorian, in a Star Wars. I got to be a lead on a television series that I love doing. Um, to win awards like this and then to parlay that into something where people are watching me unbox toys and we converse and we connect that way it's it's great so i just wanted to this is i guess is my kind of acceptance speech because i didn't get a chance to we didn't get a chance to just show up and, and and accept them in front of people and kind of relieved about that uh so i can say this in front of friends and to say thank you to everybody uh cast crew writers directors producers for doing everything to make all of us look great on the show for Kim's convenience. Um, you know, the ending was difficult, but it's not going to take away from the fence five fantastic years that uh, any opportunities it's, it's, it's provided for me personally. And so I'm very insanely grateful for that. And I'm grateful for everybody here. So thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel, uh, Funboxing Sundays. I love having you all here. I love having you out here and there's something I want to build on and something I want to grow. Please grow with me uh, and we'll, we'll have lots of fun and, and we'll get a chance to hang out uh, at cons together and do those things. Uh, and this is a perfect way to, to sort of end this episode, I think. Uh, me feeling very grateful for all of you. Um, it's almost nine o'clock. Mel, you got to get to your, you got to get to that PBS show. Uh, so everybody here, thank you again for joining us in this time of COVID. We got COVID on the run. Get vaccinated if you can. Let's get rid of those variants. Let's get rid of those mutations. Let's keep each other safe. That's why we do it. Uh, until then, stay safe. Wear a mask. Get vaccinated. Wash your hands. Stop touching your face. I'll see you guys next Sunday for Fun Boxing Sunday. Peace, love, and respect always. And kindness. Okay. See you.